Hello my friends, today we'll be checking out the Espoir B Velvet Cushion over here. This is how it looks like. Can you take a moment to appreciate the packaging? This is some high quality stuff. I really do like the packaging a lot. And I do have it on my face right now. The shade that I have is number 22 Petal. So it's a cool tone foundation and you guys know I've been on the hunt for a cool tone foundation and something to match my skin. And from all the cushion foundations that I have picked up from my trip in Korea, this is actually one of the better matches. I don't remember the exact price of how much I paid for this but it is between 30,000 won to 35,000 won plus minus. The whole set was that you get the cushion itself, a refill and also this like free bag over here. But I'm not a big fan of it because when you carry it so awkward because the size is so small but then this thing is so long I don't know it's a really weird length I don't really use this that much but of course main point is still the cushion moving on to the formula and finish of this foundation as the name suggests the velvet cushion foundation this has a velvet finish and I would describe it as a demi matte this is truly one of the more matte foundations that I own in my personal collection. I must say from my experience using cushion foundations, this formula is truly high quality. I can feel that it's really like lightweight, breathable, but still it offers a lot of coverage. One of my biggest concerns when I picked this cushion up was that, okay, because I'm dry skin and you know, based on whatever properties I just said, right, it sounds like it's more suitable for a oily or combination skin girl. Honestly, don't be afraid because this truly looks really really good and I don't feel any tightness on my skin. It doesn't feel like my skin is being sucked out like moisture or anything, no. But because I live in Singapore, you guys know, hot, humid, sweaty, yidi yidi ya. Um, yeah, I kind of like evened out a little bit. So when it comes to all of my cushion foundations, I do have to powder them down. So what really worked for me as a dry skin girl is that I will actually put a layer of loose setting powder on my skin after applying SPF or moisturizer depending if I'm staying in or not and afterwards I would just go in with the cushion foundation. After applying the cushion foundation on my face, I would then go in with another layer of loose setting powder. Nowadays I've been using the Laura Mercier loose setting powder and I feel that that is a good routine or base makeup step because it really does lock my makeup in place and at the same time it still doesn't feel anything drying or whatsoever i have never encountered that so far with this base makeup routine right i feel that my makeup nowadays doesn't look as oily or as shiny by the end of the day sometimes i realize that sometimes there's a bit of splotchiness here and there but nowadays i don't really encounter that especially not with this cushion foundation so i really do like that of course, it's natural to sweat and whatnot have you, so I do notice like a little bit of shine still. It's normal, it's human, I get it. So it's acceptable amount for me, but like when I compare it to all the other cushion foundations I have tried so far, this cushion foundation really does a good job at like making sure the shine doesn't like peek through too too much. At the moment, I think this B Velvet Espoir cushion is truly one of the cushions that gives me the least shine. Plus, this cushion adheres really well to the skin. Once you like set it there and you blend it out a little bit, it's really not gonna run around too too much. I don't notice any lifting or when you know take your finger and you start like pressing and checking whether it's lifting up. I don't notice that at all because sometimes I feel with semi-matte or even like of course glowy foundations they have a tendency to do that but the poorer quality cushion foundations they have a tendency to do that now moving on to the color of this cushion foundation number 22 petal talking just based on my experience where I've been trying to hunt for a cool tone pink 21 cushion foundation that would match me well this is actually 22 and I think 22 is a better match for me honestly I've been wearing this for like about I would say say one hour ish and I feel that a lot of Korean cushion foundations when it comes to the number 21 22 side of things when I first apply it it's like stark white or it's a very drastic ooh okay this is a little bit dangerous that kind of thing I feel with this Espoir number 22 petal yes it's slightly brighter than my skin tone when I first apply it but after a while it kind of oxidizes and then it kind of matches me a little bit better because 
in general like the 21 cool tone foundations they are like stark white and then they oxidize again like a little bit i'm like mm, okay but we're still looking very like bright and you know detached from the body based on today's like look right you can tell that yes my face is like brighter than the rest of my body over here but it kind of matches it does a decent job and like okay you look human and not like detached head and body floating you know that kind of thing i did note down that 22 petal does match me the best in indoor lighting especially when it's like nighttime in the mall that kind of thing i look really like one together with my skin <laughs> i guess but uh when i'm in like outdoor lighting you can tell that i'm wearing foundation because like it's a little bit more like white base in it it really depends on the lighting the lighting does play a huge huge part um but right now i think it's really acceptable the coverage on this cushion foundation i would describe it as medium high high most of the time especially if you go in with like two layers which is normally what i would like to go in with because i feel like nowadays i don't know just me or what but i feel that a lot of the you know clean girl aesthetic kind of thing a lot of the cushion foundations sometimes they end up going with a lot of like dewy medium coverage at best kind of vibe which you know what i like it i like the aesthetic as well but we're kind of missing that medium to high bam coverage kind of thing i've been reaching out for this a lot actually and it's coming like creeping like slowly up there together with my favorite Cleo Fixer Cushion Foundation. The Cleo Fixer Foundation is like my number one top favorite and this, this is like sitting at like number two at the moment it's getting really really close. Personally I would recommend wearing this cushion foundation when you're wearing like other makeup items like eyes, a bit of a blush, that kind of stuff. I think this cushion will look good because I think that if you were to wear it alone by itself, it might look a little bit too stark because you have like such flawless skin. But then the rest of the facial features might not be as defined as your velvety smooth skin, which can look a little bit... Mm, your skin is not really looking skin-like. Not saying that this is looking patchy or like accentuating pores, no, but it just there's that very stark contrast in like your makeup so I would recommend wearing this cushion foundation when you're wearing like other like makeup items on your face. When it comes to covering acne and acne scarring, I think that this cushion foundation does a decently good job. I cannot deny that the color and shade of the cushion foundation does play a part. You will want to go in with a shade or concealer that is the same skin tone or one to two skin tones darker first and then you cover and conceal with that to get the best coverage when it comes to covering acne scarring and marks, right? But because for today's review, I did not go in with any um, concealer or whatsoever, just the cushion alone by itself and I think it does a decent job. So just based on that, especially if this like one acne mark over here, right? I mean, I honestly don't really mind to be honest. Of course, I would love for this to you know, just, you know, go away but the other side where I have a lot of acne scarring right over here, definitely can see some of it peeking through still but I think it's great for what it is. I future crystal here but this is how the coverage is like you can see the stark difference. Oh my gosh. The coverage of this is really it's really there, Jesus. Great, so I just have enough time to leave the house. It's currently 5.19pm. I'm about to leave the house to go to a family dinner. So I will be wearing this foundation out and I will do like check-ins here and there. Of course, it's not going to be like a ooh, full day, unfortunately. But I think with a good 6 to 7 hours of wear, you kind of get the gist of how this cushion will wear throughout the day. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in a little bit. So this was right after in outdoor lighting. As you can see, my neck and face don't really match perfectly. I think my neck's a little bit darker than my face. But I realized that the corner of my nose, like the other side, yeah, this side, I didn't apply the foundation properly so you can see more redness peeking through. But the other side here, covers pretty well and this was in the car you can see this is really where you see the natural skin texture and everything but it still looks very skin like it's not sitting weird no patchiness nothing like that and overall i was very impressed do i wish that the color match was a little bit better yes but it is a korean cushion foundation 
and you know just walking around with it I think it looks fine I still can get away with it other makeup like contour and blush sits beautifully on top of it there's no weird patchiness or whatsoever so I'm overall I'm really really happy with this foundation on like how it's performing and holding up especially in Singapore's heat a lot of foundations sometimes they don't stand a chance against the heat here I think if you are a combination of oily skin girl I think you'll love this foundation because I think it will make your skin so skin light when it's mashed together with your natural oils Alright, so I'm back home. It's currently 9.22 p.m. I don't think you can really see it, but yeah, it's 9.22. It's been about four hours, I guess, since I had this foundation on. And honestly, I don't really see any like issues or whatsoever. My foundation definitely still looking pretty flawless. I mean, it's evening slash night, so it's not really that stuffy and hot, but um, there's still relatively no shine at all. I think if it was in the day, like from really like day day to end of the night kind of stuff, like a full day, there'd definitely be more shine. But so far, yeah, there's really not much shine whatsoever. Everything is like sitting really well on the skin. Yeah, I don't have any issues at all. The forehead as well. I think the redness on my eyebrows here, I think is pretty normal. I always struggle with that portion being like red for some reason. Um, but yeah, a bit of coverage has been lost, like a little bit like right here, but I mean I was like really like, touching my face and things like that. Yeah, I really don't have anything, any issues so far. I will be wearing this foundation for maybe like another one hour or so before I really like take this off. In all honesty, this cushion foundation, the Be Velvet one, the performance, the finish, it's currently outperforming my Clear Kill cover fixer cushion. I gotta be real with y'all and I really enjoy using this cushion foundation a lot. Might be my new favourite for the year of 2023. We will see, we'll see by the end of the year. <laughs> it's currently 11.12pm over here. Um, this has been on my face for about 6 hours. I'm sorry we didn't manage to like do a full like 8 hours of wear kind of thing. So up close and personal, you can see that honestly it's looking really flawless still for 6 hours of wear. I guess the one part that I noticed loss of coverage at least is around my nose. I feel like this part around my nose always have a tendency to be the first to lose coverage or I notice a little bit of like lifting and things like that or the redness peeks through a little bit more so you can definitely see it like a bit over here. If you have a look over here you can see the natural redness peeking through or whatsoever and my nose is kind of looking like you know that splotchiness is gonna happen anytime soon and you can see this area of my nose it's kind of like the foundation is kind of rubbing off a little bit so that's one of my latest struggles I guess um, but honestly it's not a big issue for me and it's not very obvious. Some shine, like you can see like slightly like right over here. For the rest of my face, I really don't have any like shine or whatsoever. It's looking pretty alright actually. I, I don't really have anything to like complain or nitpick about. It's really just like how it performs on the nose, I guess. But other than that, I don't really have much of an issue. See, if I zoom your back out, you won't really notice like the nose situation, the tip of the nose here. If anybody is so up close in your face, you need to tell them to back off really. And normally this is the range that people will be like sitting across from you or whatsoever. So I think in general, it still looks really good from afar. Nobody is going to be so up close in your face and like nitpick on your nose and point it out, what not have you. It's not really a drastic thing to take note of. It's just a very natural way of how the foundation wears away. I'd rather my foundation and skin to look like one rather than looking like a cakey, patchy mess. I really don't experience it with this foundation over here as you can see and in general, I'm very impressed. If you would like to check out the Espa B Velvet Cushion, where to get them, I'll put all the information down in the description box below. I'll put the links, affiliate codes, where you can save money, things like that. So you can check the description box down below. And if you found the video helpful, leave a like, subscribe as well, and leave a comment. How would you feel about this cushion foundation over here? Do you like it? Dislike it? You'd be like, meh kind of thing? Let me know. I love to talk to you guys. And if you'd like to hear my honest review on the Cleo Fixer Cushion Foundation as well, you can check out this video I did over here. It is also a similar format where I like do a review and wear test of the Cleo Fixer Cushion Foundation and also this is my like number one cushion foundation so you can check out that video over there.